Hey guys, JB here from Alpha Wolf Consulting coming to you with the second episode of Understanding Thyself uh, and this is Understanding Self-Validation. So this episode will be focused in on understanding, well, what is validation? You know, what is self-validation? What is even the ideal of a self? Like, what is this ideal of myself or who I am? Okay, and then we'll understand and look at, you know, language and narratives, okay, and how they influence the mind and influence, you know, the, the psychological construct of our reality. But even better is then we'll understand or, or talk about you know, the biochemical responses of my, you know, thoughts and feelings and emotional states. So when we understand this, we're able to then biohack our body to release specific chemicals to increase the likelihood of success in what we do. For example, if I can dramatically increase my dopamine hits, okay, and I can feel euphoric in a conversation, I can create an atmosphere of euphoria, which can influence the decision-making of the person that I talk to. So, you know, just understand this, you know, we have a biochemical factory in our brain, okay, that, that can rep release so many different variations of all the chemicals. And, and we've got to understand alcohol and drugs and cigarettes and stuff like that and all these compulsive urges are just us seeking through negative patterns the, to hack the biochemical responses. So what we've got to understand is if we really want to, you know, hack our biochemical responses, well, one, we can use external um, stimuli you know, and unfortunately, the ones that the majority of people use do have negative health benefits to the body. They degrade the body. So we got to understand that. But also, you know, we can, we can do it through external stimuli or we can understand internal stimuli. So internal stimuli is using thought to evoke emotions and, you know, using emotional states to evoke the biochemical states in the body. But we'll get into this more de in detail later. But we'll start off with, well, you know, what is validation? So to, to understand this is to understand decision-making. Validation is the essence of our decision-making because it's how we you know, assess if we succeed or if we fail. And what we've got to understand is that in society, it is advantageous for us to seek validation externally because it increases inclusion. So by asking someone their opinion on how you went about something and getting their feedback increases your bond with that person. Because, you know, it, it's, so we got to understand that in life, okay, to exist in a community of people, we have to have certain traditional behaviours or interactions. And this is what we can see is diminishing and why, you know, communities are sort of breaking down is because no one's investing into them, you know. To the, to the point of having the majority of the population investing into it. But when we break down and we stop with our social interactions, we become hostile. You've got to understand fear is the unknown. So the less I talk to you, the more like suspicious I will become of you because I cease to understand what's happening with you. So I don't understand your position. So we got to understand that becoming disjointed or, or disconnected from other people 
is what breeds insecurity about other people. So the way to overcome, you know, social anxiety is to become connected with a lot of people. Now, it's not that you go out and you make a million friends, but it's like if you can connect with 10 to 15 good people, that will give you enough of a base to where you'll, you'll feel on, on the positive more than you'll feel on the negative. So in every situation, your self-belief will be a lot higher than your self-doubt. And the more disjointed you become, the increase in self-doubt. Now, the reason for this, or, or one of the reasons for this, is when we become disjointed, we become isolated. When we become isolated, there, there is only our perspective. So if I'm isolated, I only understand from my point of view. So it limits my understanding of the situation and the environment around me. The more people I have that are looking at different aspects of the external environment, the broader my understanding will be about the external environment at an accurate level. So what we're going to understand is that it's this perceived fear of weakness which causes us to become suspicious of other people. So, you know, it's insecurities that, you know, maybe this person might move against me or might act against me or maybe they, you know, like it'll depend on the relationship and the situation. But if we took, for example, friends groups, you know, the suspicions would grow that maybe they're, you know, spending more time with other friends and, you know, they're intentionally doing it to isolate me and all of this. And, and you'll start to overthink. And the problem is, is that the more you focus in on a problem, the, the more your brain is going to create the illusion of new problems. So they are real problems. They're just not your problems. But you take them on as if they're your own problems. And we could we could look at this like, for example, let's say let's say we were exercising and looking to lose weight. So, you know, we're looking to diet and lose weight. We're gonna do the best we can. And then what happens is the illusions start coming in of, well, if we're going to do this, we have to do it properly and be the healthiest. So we have to have a specific diet. So like, let's say a no carb diet. And then we have to have a specific re regime in training so that we're doing specific, you know, durations of um, like exertion and things like that. And we start creating all these illusions when the truth is all we have to do is avoid eating the worst food and just stick to some form of consistent exercise. Like, that's it. But we create these illusions of other people's beliefs and other people's expectations and we take them on as our own instead of understanding that that's just another way you can do it. But if it's not profitable for you to do it that way, then what's going to happen is you're going to bog yourself down trying to solve multiple problems that are irrelevant because they have no actual impact. Like, honestly, everyone, every human being understands that fruit and veg is the quickest and easiest way to be healthy. You know what I mean? Like eating processed food, you will never get healthy doing that. Everyone knows this. Anyone that tells you otherwise is just talking shit and being a dickhead. Like they're just being a fucking idiot. Because the thing is, is we, we naturally know this because we have natural urges and instincts. Because for hundreds of years or thousands of years that was our primary food source so it's ingrained in our genetic memory so that's why we have instincts towards certain foods and we understand these instincts as cravings so 
we got to understand a craving isn't a biological response. A craving is a psychological construct. It's a psychological response. So, for example, I will crave cabana from the servo. You know, the greasy fucking, you know, poison. But the logical understanding is that it is, you know, high in grease, high in salt. It's highly processed meat, okay? So, like, already we know that it's, it's going to negatively take away from your quality of life because it's, it's, it's like there's nothing that my body can use out of it. And to be honest, for anyone that would argue against that, if you actually look and find, okay, and trace back the meat sources of those sausages, so just go to the abattoirs and find out what meat goes into them and have a look. And you'll, you'll find that the higher the processing in meat products, the, the more questionable the meat. So it's, it's not that it's bad meat, but it's all the offcuts, the snouts, like all the, all the, just the bits that they have no use for. They just chop it up and chuck it in and grind it down. But you've also got to understand, like, these animals in, you know, the, the, like, the sort of factory farmed, you know, the the large like graziers in that like a lot of these animals are like heavily disease ridden so like cancerous growths and shit like that and these these cunts at the abattoir don't really give a fuck so like if you understand the knowledge okay you can you can change your decision making so even though I crave that, like, what am I actually craving? Well, there's, there's three sources of fuel for your body. There's carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So your muscles. So if we starve ourselves of carbohydrates, the, the secondary fuel source our body seeks to use is our fat, our fat storage. That's why you feel if you go on a low-carb diet and you don't have carbs, you feel lethargic and you feel like pretty hungry and pretty shitty and a bit weaker is because you're using fat fuel. Fat is less efficient than, you know, carbohydrates, which just means it requires more energy to break down and, and repurpose fat into energy than it does for carbs. And then the last result, result is... If you run out of carbohydrates and you run out of fats, is your body will start cannibalizing the muscles. So that's why if you ever go on a diet, you have to remain on a high protein diet because you don't want your body to cannibalize your muscles. So that's why some people, when they lose weight, when they go from a bulk to a shred, you know, some of them lose muscle size is because they don't, they, they take away all the carbs and if they've already got a low, you know, a low body fat, like, percentage, what will happen is their body will consume the protein at a higher rate because they'll be exerting themselves at an extreme rate. But they won't be eating like that, so they won't be fueling their body. So the thing is, is whenever you crave something, your body is craving carbohydrates. You know, you, you might be craving, you know, the vitamin C of an orange. So you're craving orange. Or you might be craving, like, so we just got to understand that cravings are just psychological constructs that our subconscious uses to direct behavior towards a specific outcome. But the problem is our mind doesn't understand the difference between good and bad. Okay, so for example, like the meaning is all constructed in our conscious and our subconscious mind, but our subconscious mind doesn't have logic, doesn't have reason. Okay, 
So when our subconscious mind acts within its own, you know, validity, uh, validity or within its own, you know, constraints, what will happen is it's, it's not reasonable. It's not logical. So what we got to understand is our subconscious doesn't really care so long as it's getting the results that it wants. So for example, you know, when you truly are in hunger, you're not craving junk food. Like you're craving the most like, like sustenance dense food. So what we got to understand is what is an actual craving, which is just a signal from my body saying, I desire this. And then what is uh, like a perceived craving. So for example, if I crave nicotine, that's a perceived craving. My body doesn't need nicotine to operate. So when I crave nicotine, it's just a psychological craving. I want nicotine. I don't need it. I just want it. I feel like it. So what we got to understand is the separation between what we, what we actually need in life and what we desire and want. Because when we can create that separation, then we can understand, well, the meaning goes to what I need in life and what I desire is the meaningless stuff of life. So, you know, if I'm desiring you know, to be in good shape and to be in good health and to have a good diet, it doesn't mean anything. It's just what I want to do. So it's not that I need to have this motivation and meaning to keep it. If I want it, it'll be like, I'll just naturally move towards it. I don't need meaning. But I do need meaning into the core aspects, you know, of what I need in life. So I need to have meaning into the foods that I eat, you know, what, what is the meaning behind the food, you know, that I eat? Do I just eat, you know, any junk or, or do I put the effort into, you know, try and eat as, you know, healthy and sustainable for myself. So sustainable just in the sense of, you know, if we're eating foods that have low chemical, um, like compositions, well, that's more sustainable for my body because my liver's not having to scrub so many toxins out of, you know, the food that it's trying to digest. But also, when we understand the purpose of our digestive system and we don't think of it as a garbage dump, think of it more as a report, uh, you know, a resource reallocation facility. So this is where food comes in and then our body or, or our digestive system recodes, you know, that food into cells for our body and deploys them into our body and reconstitutes our cells. So, you know, if we're only ever giving it like the worst junk, it's never going to be good. But you know, so it comes down to, you know, you have to be able to validate the diet that you want, you know, the exercise regime that you want and to be able to do it because you want to do it. And that's, that's why validation is so important. But the problem is, is when we seek external validation, so when I, let's say I do a training regime, and, you know, I want to get into great shape and I seek validation externally. Well, how I'm going to approach that is going to be completely different because now I'm going to ask people what are the most important things that they think and then I'm only going to do those things and then I'm going to seek validation from them that I'm doing them well. And the problem is, is we're not actually, you know, using our mind. And our, and our ability to think, you know, to critically think. Because the thing is, is depending on, on what sort of um, results that you want in life will depend on who you listen to. 
like if you're trying to become a strong man you would not listen to a bodybuilder because a bodybuilder is there for shaping and toning and the development of the muscle whereas a strong man is looking to you know reach a maximum performance and then look to hit you know like much higher targets you know where we're talking you know they're looking to hit four or five hundred kilos on deadlifts whereas a bodybuilder would probably stop at you know one two hundred kilos because it's too much strain whereas you know so understanding this is just understanding well who do you go to for the information and, and what information is valuable to you so you know if we don't understand how to validate our internal thoughts and beliefs because that's all we're doing so whenever i seek validation so let's say you know i run a 40k marathon and let's say i run it 10 minutes under the last time or, or like like the last record right and smash that record if i'm out there seeking validation like what am I seeking from people? Like, like I'm seeking them to give me approval so that I'm able to experience and feel the emotions that I want to feel. So self-validation is just the understanding of cutting out the middleman of I don't for certain things in life, I don't need to validate external. But for example, let's say I want to go and do a new hairstyle, you know, and I want to, you know, get the impression of what other people would think if I was going to do this. And let's say it was dramatic, drastic. Let's say I was going to shave my head bald and go bald from now on. Right? If I do that, like if I'm looking, you know, to get other people's opinion on what they think, how they think I'd look, like their opinions are valid. But if I'm looking for a specific result, I need a specific opinion or I need specific knowledge. So what we have to do is understand between general actions and then highly specific actions, where when it comes to highly specific actions, okay, and highly specific actions are, you know, Anything that we have to devote a lot of time and attention to succeeding in, but also it's anything that is vital to, you know, the core of us, to us fulfilling, you know, our life's desires while on earth. So understanding this is just understanding that if we, like, as people, don't live the life we want to live, we become highly negative and toxic because there's no point living a life that makes you miserable. So the problem is, is with society, society doesn't want that. For as much as society talks about, you know, equality and individuality and freedom, that's not the reality we live in. The reality we live in is that there is exception to being outside of the box but you know there is high scrutiny as well so like for example look at elon musk he you know supported you know the ukraine army by giving them you know um like the starlink and stuff like that not the internet access and all the tactical stuff but like what happened was you know after two years he didn't want to foot the bill anymore and they were sort of acting like well you you have to always foot the bill like we need it <coughs> and the problem is everyone overlooks what he what he did for them and then focuses in, well, he should just eat the cost. But it's sort of like, I'll, 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 I'll put it like this. Let's say you're in the, in the desert and you're a group of, say, like 10 people. 
when two people are really pissed off at each other because you are lost in the desert and you have to, you know, walk back to your base or walk back to shelter or wherever you're going. And two people decide that they want to have it out and they want to fight. And they're going to fight until there's a winner. So they're going to do, you know, boxing matches so everyone has to stand around in the sun, consuming their water. And then these people, these two people, start to get exhausted. So they require additional water. And they require additional water and they keep going and they keep going and no one says anything. And then at a point, they put themselves into a critical situation. The thing is, is that, like, when we do that, when we forgo what we need to do to make sure we're safe for other people's egos or for other people's opinions or their points of view, okay, in life, because this happens many times. You know, like, you may want to do something specific. Like, let's say maybe you want to spend six years traveling through Europe, you know, going around and seeing every museum and every place and, and recording it because that's what you're passionate about, right? And you put that off for other people's egos, i.e., let's say it's family and it's parents because they don't they don't see the value in that because the point of that isn't you know it's not to make a profit like the thing is is when you follow your passion you'll you'll live the most profitable life but when you follow your passion profit isn't the intention so when you do things without profit being the intention profit is a result because when you do something without the intent of profit you focus more on the intent of the actions and the meaning behind the actions so every action has the right meaning so you know that's the problem with other people's points of view is if we let them in to the critical aspects of who we are that's what, that's what self-validation is, is building a barrier of my ideal self and who I am and, you know, all the core beliefs that I hold about life, you know, and, you know, the universe and just everything, you know, I create such a strong belief in those that other people's opinions cease to matter because if I'm not strong within my belief on what I believe in life as being true, that's when we get, can, like, basically, we get compelled to do things that we don't want to do. So think about it like this, okay? For any um, war that happens, prior to any war happening, the government of each country has to build animosity between the peoples. Typically for, you know, ten, 5, 10, maybe 15 years prior, you know, depending on the aggressiveness of the strategies. Like we can see it now with how the media goes after China and how the, you know, narrative is, is being created that there's nothing but a fight with China. So, like, because... If, if the, pro, the population isn't prior, um, you know, isn't, isn't, like the animosity isn't created between the people to the point of being willing to kill, like they're not going to be effective soldiers. So like, you know, many countries use false flag attacks or they'll, you know, weapons of mass destruction and RR, you know, all this stuff. So... You know, they have to create this idea or this ideal of who the enemy is, you know, who this bad person is that you should feel hatred towards. And the thing is, is when we always validate externally, the problem is, is the, 
the way that they position this information is underhanded. So they say this while smiling and talking politely in a soft tone. You know, they do all these things where they use like psychological uh, like conditioning tools of, for example, I'll give you an example of this and it's really cool. But basically, if we're just having a good conversation and I'm talking at this relaxed tempo and then I increase and decrease and increase and decrease and increase and decrease, okay? But if I increase on specific words that have a shared linked meaning, you won't understand what's happening. But what will happen is you start to associate, okay, when you hear the increase with that meaning. So I can use that to start manipulating your mind by embedding a specific meaning. So like, for example, they do this in sales um, and things like that where, you know, one of the, the sales strategies, I, I, I'm not sure who created it, but basically you, you want to get people saying yes. So you, you ask them, irrelevant yes questions where the only answer is yes or if they're pissed off they might say no so i'd ask you do you like it when it's sunny outside yes oh have you been outside lately when it's you know been sunny and beautiful that you remember and people will say yes and you're getting them to say yes and then we start switching around the questions so then we start asking them where we're asking them a general question and then we'll put in a specific question where we'll ask them well you know do you really like the product like it, it, it suits your pro like it suits your needs right and they'll say yes before they've even realized because it's just a, a behavior they're just used to saying yes and nodding their heads so while we're talking we're nodding our head getting them used to it because if i sit here and nod my head and you watch it You'll start watching the behavior and then you'll naturally look to mimic it. Because what this is, when I'm nodding my head and you look to mirror me, okay, this is a looking to connect. So this is one way in communication that we seek to connect with one another is by mirroring behavior and attitude. So like, for example, if you're not aggressive and I come over and I'm aggressive, it's going to create, you know this sort of interaction where my energy will be high and harsh and yours will be low and calm and there'll be a mismatch and it'll sort of just be an awkward situation whereas if we're both high in aggressiveness and we're interacting it'll be a more equal exchange but you know emotional states mean that logic isn't the you know the main Thing that's happening so illogical actions happen but the key to it is is like the the more you know we prepare our mind and the more we prepare ourselves okay to be able to handle our different emotional states okay the more we can stay in a neutral stance where we're not reacting to everything that happens but we're choosing what we want to move towards so so we're in a position where we're able to now dictate the tempo because that's what we're looking to do is we're looking to create a frequency and a tempo in communication <coughs> or engagements that is appeasable to other people so the tones that we use you know the I don't know what it's called, maybe harmonics, but the different frequencies that we bring our voice through to animate it, to create, because what that does is when you hear someone who is animated in their voice, your, your mind tells you different bits of information. When you hear things in different tones, your mind hears different information. So we've got to understand that like, you know, there's a very heavy importance on how we communicate, 
not just what we communicate because what we communicate makes up such a small portion of how we communicate and the problem is okay with the media if we're not looking for the messages that they're truly pushing okay so for example um, take COVID. Um, they they pushed the hospital death rates and they pushed the you know on the media and things like that to get our attention there when in fact you know community spread was quite low like it wasn't this apocalyptic event but they pushed our attention there to keep us focused there so that they could create the narrative of the story that was happening that basically you know if the government didn't have full authority and power to dictate the lives of their individuals or their people, that the world would collapse, anarchy would ensue. When in fact, if we had to just stop the bravado and just double down instead of investing in all the bullshit, trying to keep up the, you know, the imagery and the fucking narrative if they just invested into the treatments from the day dot job would have been done like there was no need to do all that bullshit all that media campaigning all that wasted fucking money when they were in fucking parliament talking shit about fucking vaccine bills and wasting fucking taxpayers' money and wasting fucking time. They closed the border. They closed the fucking economy. They did all these stupid things rather than deal with the fucking problem. And that's one of the big things is if you just deal with the problem, job done. So in life, the problem is, is if you want to do something in life, Many people will have opinions about how you should do it and the ways that it should go and what's going to come up against you. And they're going to create all these beliefs because they can't imagine themselves just putting in the effort. Listen to David Goggins. He talks about it. All you have to do is put in the effort to what you want. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't even have to be excited about it. You don't even have to be happy about it. You can be miserable, put in the effort and get the result and still be miserable. You can be happy, put in the effort, get the result and you still be happy. You can be happy, put in the effort, don't get the result and then just choose to continue to put in the effort until you do get the result. But the problem is once we start validating ourselves externally, then we get onto other people's time frames. Then we get onto other people's thoughts on effort and this and that and that's the bullshit so for example there's two ways to launch a business the first way is you launch that business and do whatever you need to do until it succeeds and the second way is you launch that business with a business plan that runs for 12 months and you'll review after 12 months like there you know that's how we approach life. We, we either go all in and choose to just do it or we choose to make plans and bullshit and talk shit about doing it. And we overcomplicate it and we, you know, put a time limit on it. We put an amount of effort we're willing to get, give. You know, oh, I want to be in, be in my best health, but I'm not willing to diet seven days a week. I'll diet six days a week. Like... If you want to be in your best health in terms of diet, you just choose to a diet that, that is the most healthy and natural. Like that's all you do. You just make that choice. There's no there's no ifs, buts, maybe, there's no complication. It's just if I eat fucking fruits and vegetables, I lose weight. Like if I eat fruit foods that are fresh in the context of, you know, have been picked in the last couple of you know, days to weeks or made in the last couple of days to weeks opposed to two to three months to six months ago. Like, I'm always going to be healthier. 
because the the healthiest food is the ripest food you know straight from the bushes straight from the trees but what we do is we you know in life many of us i used to be like this it's the trap it's the trap of other people's bullshit because you just got to understand like think about anything in life like the best example i can always give is when you're in love with someone you know when you when you have a like deep crush on someone or you're in love with someone and you think about like what you would say or what you would do and all of that and it's like when it's real and true like you just do it like you just get the urges and if you follow your natural urges to take action like that's just the path to success there's no need to figure it out all you do is ask yourself where do i want to go and then you just listen to yourself for the path and you just do the work and walk the path but the problem is is the majority of people will say i'll walk the path for six days if i haven't reached it in six days I, it's not for me and that's the thing is there's two ways to look at it okay how much am i willing to give okay or how much am i able to give so when we look at it in the context of how much am i able to give we're looking at is what is the effort that i can sustain for an in, indefinite period of time that is comfortable but also moves me towards my goal opposed to saying you know a hundred actions is my limitation okay so i have to choose now the right actions to take to be able to do that so do you get it like the ones that are trying to do something they're just saying i'm willing to do x amount of work so everyone makes this up in their own mind and basically they they overthink and they think that some actions are more effective than other actions when in truth all actions compound through consistency so if you just take the approach to how much can i sustain over an indefinite period your guaranteed success if you try on the other hand to do something and you want to make plans and try and figure out the most efficient way and do this and do that and try and maximize this and that by all means waste time and energy because the thing is you'll do something for a week or two and then you'll give up because you'll think there's another path when in fact, all you have to do is walk down the path. You don't know how long it is. It could take a day, it could take a week, it could take a month. It doesn't matter. Like, what do you need to be able to do it? So that's the thing in life, is the majority of people's opinion that we listen to and limit ourselves by are people that are just trying to live life. They're just trying in life. They're not actually doing anything. They're just trying. Because the thing is, is the ones that know, that, that do in life, that, you know, just go out there and do, understand that it doesn't matter what you do, so long as you do something. So long as you just choose something to do with your life, you'll have a meaning in life and purpose. If you never choose to do something because you're trying to find the right thing, you'll always live without meaning wasting your time on illusions and every time that you create a, a path or you pick a path you're looking for the easier path the path that's more efficient that gets you there faster it's the trap so self-validation is the beginning of taking control of your mind in saying these are my thoughts and beliefs they are more valuable than other people's thoughts and beliefs on this topic. So if you're trying to achieve a goal, like let's say weight loss, and you're doing an exercise regime and you've picked one that, you know, has worked for other people and you see the benefits to it. So let's say high intensity cardio and then high intensity weights, 
okay? So lower weight, but at a higher higher repetition, okay? And you, you decide this is the right path for me. Like, and then you're doing it and people see you getting a 12 kilo dumbbell. And they go, why don't you go heavier? You can go bigger. You want to have muscles, don't you? Like, it doesn't matter what they think. They can want to have muscles. Tell them to go heavier. Tell them to pick up the heaviest ones and do a couple of sets. Maybe even just do 100, 100 repetitions in one set. Maybe do that five times. Do you get it? Like, the problem is, is we listen to them. We, we give value to their, their opinions. And the problem is, is if it's someone that isn't where you want to be or isn't going where you want to go, or doesn't have something that you want, their opinion's null and meaningless. Like, why value the opinion of someone whose life would make you miserable? And that's the important thing, is once we realise that, that other people's opinions are how we limit ourselves in life and how we limit our lives, we really unlock the ability to block out that noise, to block out the opportunity for that to grow root and to rot our garden, which is our mind. So what we want to do is, through self-validation, we want to create a narrative of beliefs and thoughts and ways of being and experiences, and we make those sacred and holy, which just means we put them on a pedestal to where they're above other people's opinions. So if we know that effort will always get us the result, if someone asks, why put in all that effort, you're not seeing any results, you tell them, your opinion's null and meaningless. Like, I know for a fact, effort always gets results. It doesn't matter if you think that results should have been now. It doesn't matter if you think that there is an easier way doesn't matter like that's the belief like to me personally that belief is higher than any other belief the only belief that could beat that would be someone who's got a superior belief in in terms of you know maybe they've got an understanding of you know like strategic effort where they're able to implement you know other people's labor as well to maximize the leverage of the time and the effort required. So, you know, there's all these different things. But when we understand that what is the creator in our life is our thoughts, our words spoken, our beliefs, which are just thoughts on repeat, so a belief is just a thought that has consecutively been thought, you know, let's say 10 to 15 to 30 times. I haven't measured it out to know until it becomes a belief. But basically think about it like this. Every time you think of anything, your, your brain already, when you learnt it, created a synaptic pathway to that information. So every time you think about it, every repetition you do strengthens that pathway and makes it more efficient. More efficient and strong enough to the point to where it's now able to do subconscious thought. Subconscious thought moves much quicker than conscious thought. So there's less processing in subconscious. Oh, well, the subconscious mind has more processing. So what happens is, is it's able to make decisions and, and do movements at much quicker speeds. That's why like instincts and reflexes are so quick. That's why you can catch yourself and your hand moves there. If you had to consciously think to catch yourself, you know, you'd need a couple of seconds. But on instinct, you can do it. And that's because that pathway has like been created so strong that it doesn't, it, it needs the least amount of energy from your brain to create a fire and go.
whereas something that you don't think about a lot or you don't memorize, okay, that synaptic pathway is quite weak. So it takes a long time for the memory to get there, for the energy to get there, for the transfer. So what we got to understand is that our beliefs are just thoughts, okay, that we have dedicated repetitive action of thinking to, to the point to where they become, you know, a unconscious thought. And when they become an unconscious thought, they happen before conscious thought is made aware. So you cannot catch yourself in the act. That's why it's hard to catch yourself slipping your temper. And you're always shouting by the time you realize you're angry. You weren't angry, but then you're shouting. And that's what happens is the, the conscious thought just moves the unconscious thought moves so quick that you're in a in an interaction where you're just reacting and then you're realizing well how did i get angry why are we yelling so what we got to understand is we cannot catch ourselves in the act it's pointless to try and catch ourselves in the act it's better to watch for patterns and trends in our behavior or our outcomes in 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 relation to other people so when interacting in groups, are the groups happy with us? Do they like us? Do they like being around us? Or do they avoid us? Do they segregate? Like, we, we got to work out, you know, how are we interacting? Because that's how we do it. But we can also see it in the patterns and the trends of the outcomes to the goals we've had. So a common trend of, you know, low self esteem and, and low self worth and low self value and you know self belief is that you're highly competent and able to do things for other people but when it comes to yourself you're incapable to do what you want or need to do because you don't feel right doing it because it's because you have a belief okay and this is what I used to have is that you had to help other people before helping yourself which isn't a bad belief but it's a negative belief in the sense that then that limits me to them being you know having to find people that are willing to do the work and go there that I can help that share my values that share my ideals so by being able to break that belief and understand that well actually to invest in yourself is the most selfless action you can take because the more you invest into yourself and your position and the more you follow your goals and ambitions in life and your dreams, and the more you be who you want to be in life, the, the more energy you bring to life, the more you bring out of those around you, the more, you know, authentic your actions are, the less you're, you know, trying to get results. So what happens is, is when you genuinely try to connect with people, you genuinely connect with people. So, you know, if my goal in life is to, you know, be the best version of myself, be an ideal version of myself, you know, and have ideal interactions and ideal, you know, relationships, then, you know, the onus is on me to uphold that standard. But the problem is we put that out onto other people. And that's where we come down. That's where we come apart is when we lose that distinction between 
self-care and self-need and then you know selfless care for others and you know selfless need because it's taught in all the bullshit of fucking hollywood and their you know romantic comedies and all that bullshit it's such toxic behavior like no joke okay like let's say like you know, any romantic comedy concept, okay? If I'm, let's say, engaged to be married to a woman, right? To a girl. And we're deeply in love. And two weeks before the wedding, she freaks out and blows it off and throws everything away, throws the baby out with the bathwater. Like... I'm not going to try and get her back. Like, that's done. Like, that's a ridiculous way to fucking behave. As if someone would ever behave that way. But the problem is, is these romantic comedies, they're trying to be quirky and they're trying to be off-center and do unique things because they're trying. And that's the funny thing. So it's not actually an authentic interaction. But the problem is, is they lead us to believe it is true. They lead us to believe that this is what is. So we've got to understand the propaganda of our media is, is such that they are able to position like our truths and knowledge. Like the majority of people, okay, the majority of people get their understanding of love from fucking romantic comedies and fucking reality series. Like, or books, or novels, or this, or that. They don't get it from experience or what they truly want. They're just trying to recreate, and I was bad for this, trying to recreate you know, these scenarios or stories or things. And that's the problem. When we're trying, it's an indication of if I have to try and do something, it's not right for me. If, if it is not natural for me to just do it, and I'm not willing to just naturally do it, it's not right for me. Because when we get into trying, that's when we get into looking to control and manipulate the environment and the circumstances. And that's the problem. So these, you know, Hollywood and these romantic comedies and all of this, they put the, you know, psychological scenes or, you know, because you understand, like, the psychology of music and things like that, like, they're using that, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to create these emotional states. So when they have these ha these sad moments where you choke up and you're tearing up and all of that, just understand, like, that's just a calculated um, interaction to where they're trying to artificially amplify the, the feeling. So it really amplifies that state within you, that emotional state, so that when you're watching it and it's a happy scene that you're feeling euphoric and ecstatic when it's a dramatic scene you're feeling stressed and tense like so you know if we understand that like how are they able to influence our emotional states and it's just through behavior it's through story, it's through, you know, sounds, it's through visual. So you got to understand we have these little like mirror reflectors in our eyes and basically they're receptors. And if I see you taking an action that I have taken, I then, I don't just watch you do it, but I watch you do it and remember me doing it and experience it as if I'm doing it as you. So what we got to understand is when we're watching these movies, okay, these scenes are designed in a way that creates a narrative and a story in your mind that creates certain meaning 
and then it, it manipulates your emotional state. So we're able to do this with our language, you know, with the words we say, with the thoughts that we have. It's the exact same way. So if I'm always thinking positive and happy thoughts, I'm going to feel positive and happy. Job done. If I want to feel love and I just choose to feel love, like now I'm feeling love. So I'm able to manipulate my emotional state because I can validate it ex internally. I don't need to validate it externally. I don't need to have another person act, you know, loving towards me for me to be able to feel loving towards myself. And that's the, the true value of self-validation is that liberation to now I can be, do and have and feel whatever I want in life. And irregardless of anything anyone else says, if I believe it, it's real. It happens. All right. Well, I'm going to finish this one off, but I hope you enjoy that and have a great day. Bye.